Welcome back. Today we're going to be discussing connective tissue. Now this is the second video in this series so make sure you've already watched the first one which was about epithelial tissues before starting this one. Just as a recap, epithelial tissues you can see on the left hand side right there and they consist of very very tightly packed cells that are held together with a bunch of different types of intracellular junctions. Um, these cells cover surfaces and line cavities in the body. These cells tend to rapidly divide because they're constantly getting damaged and they are avascular which means they don't have a very good blood supply. Now look at this picture on the right. This is actually sort of a generic connective tissue and you can see there's a cell here there's a cell here, there's a cell there. So they're all sort of spread out. There's a lot more space between the cells. And this type of tissue tends to be very well vascularized, so it has a good blood supply. And there's a lot of diverse types and functions, which is good because we have lots of different things that can help our body out, sort of hold things together and fill spaces. But it's also bad because it means you have to learn a lot of different types. So connective tissue is the most abundant tissue by weight. It is also very diverse, which is good for our body, but it's kind of bad because we have a lot of different types to learn. The overall function is holding the body together, binding structures, supporting the body. Um, connective tissue also protects, both in terms of Physical protection, like the skeleton, protects our inner organs, but it, the lymph is also part of the connective tissue, and that houses our immune system, which protects us from foreign invaders. Uh, we also store fat in our connective tissue. We produce blood cells, and we repair tissue damage. So a lot of different types of functions for connective tissues. Remember that epithelial tissue was made up of lots and lots of cells very closely packed together. Connective tissue is quite different, very different structure. It's made up of cells plus protein fibers plus ground substance. The protein fibers and the ground substance together form something called the matrix. So we say that connective tissue is living cells in a non-living matrix. Let's talk more closely about the cells in connective tissue. The cells you find in connective tissue are pretty spread out. You might recognize the name of some of the cells on this picture. They are also on your vocab list for Unit 2. For many connective tissue cells, their job is either to secrete the protein fibers that create the matrix or to maintain that matrix. The first component of connective tissue was the cells. The second component of connective tissue are protein fibers. And there are three main types of connective tissue fibers. Collagen fibers are like thick, strong ropes, and they help bind things together. You can see the collagen fibers here, these really thick, strong fibers that are running through this tissue. Elastic fibers, as you might guess from the name, are stretchy. And they allow certain types of connective tissue to ro recoil back into shape after it's been spread out. And you can see the elastic fibers are these sort of thinner, more branched fibers going through here. Reticular fibers help give support and hold together delicate structures. You can see the reticular fibers up here forming kind of a little mesh network. Although this picture shows equal amounts of all three protein fibers, the reality is that different types of connective tissue have varying combinations of these types of fibers. For example, bone has almost all collagen fibers to give them a lot of strength and the connective tissue under your skin have lots of elastic fibers to allow it to stretch and pull back into shape. Some connective tissues, like blood and lymph, don't normally have protein fibers in them. So the third component of connective tissue is ground substance. Ground substance makes up the bulk of connective tissue. Its characteristics range pretty widely. It can be calcified and very solid, as the case of bone, all the way to totally fluid, as in the case of blood and lymph. So ground substance is made up of water and large organic molecules. It contains fibronectin, which is the main adhesion protein of connective tissue, and glycosaminoglycans, or GIGs, which are large polysaccharide molecules. Remember I said there are lots of types of connective tissue. We can split them into three main categories. Connective tissue proper, 
fluid connective tissue, and supporting connective tissue. Each of these types can also be split into a couple of subtypes, like connective tissue proper can be split into loose versus dense connective tissue, or supportive connective tissue can be split into cartilage versus bone. Remember as we go through all of these types that you should aim to get the structure, function, and location example of each type. We'll start with loose connective tissue. Areolar connective tissue is a kind of generic tissue. It's considered loose because there's quite a bit of space in between the cells. You find this tissue around organs or under your skin. This type of tissue's function is to bind and hold structures together. It has some collagenous fibers for strength and some elastic fibers for support. The cells in areolar connective tissue are called fibroblasts. Our next type of loose connective tissue is adipose tissue, and this is where we store excess fat. This is also considered loose because there's quite a bit of space around the cells. This type of tissue helps to insulate against heat loss and it protects us by serving as padding against damage. The cells in adipose connective tissue are called adipocytes. You would find this around the kidneys, behind the eyes, and around the heart. Reticular connective tissue is our third type of loose connective tissue, and it is found in the walls of organs, such as the liver and the spleen. It contains a lot of reticular fibers, which kind of form a mesh bag to help support and hold the organs together. You don't really see a lot of collagen fibers in this type of tissue. The cells in reticular connective tissue are called reticulocytes. Now let's move into the dense connective tissue. Dense regular connective tissue is found in ligaments that hold together bones or tendons that attach muscles to bone. It is in the dense connective tissue category and you can see that there isn't a lot of space around the cells and the fibers in these pictures. It contains a lot of collagen fibers that are all running parallel in one direction. This gives it a lot of tensile strength, which is strength in one direction. So if you pull on it in the direction that the fibers are running, it's very strong, but if you actually hit it in the opposite direction, across the grain, this way, it can tend to tear. The cells in dense regular connective tissue are called fibroblasts. This type of connective tissue is a little bit unique because it has a very poor blood supply. It takes a long time to heal ligaments or tendons because of this. Dense, irregular connective tissue is found in the dermis, and because the collagen and elastic fibers all run in different directions, it displays strength in many different directions. It's also in the dense category, as you can see that there isn't a lot of space around the cells and the fibers. The cells in dense, irregular connective tissue are called fibroblasts. Elastic connective tissue contains a lot of elastic fibers, and they run parallel to each other, also giving it a very dense appearance, meaning that there isn't a lot of ground substance space in between the cells. Your book gives the location as between vertebrae and the spine, but you would also find this tissue in the lungs, in the walls of your arteries, such as the aorta, in your hollow organs, such as the heart and stomach, and the airways places where things expand and need to contract again. The cells in elastic tissue are also called fibroblasts. So moving into the supportive category, the first one is called hyaline cartilage. All cartilage contains lots of matrix, and it's more rigid than connective tissue proper, but still has some flexibility. The cells in cartilage are called chondrocytes, and they live inside little caves within the matrix called lacuna. In the hyaline cartilage shown here, you can see that it is a very smooth, almost glassy matrix. You often find hyaline cartilage at the ends of long bones in the joint cavity, as it creates a friction-free surface for two bones moving against one another. This type of cartilage is, is weak, and it can be damaged very easily. Because it has a poor blood supply, it heals very slowly, if at all. Fibrocartilage is our second type of supportive tissue. This is the strongest type of cartilage, and it is used as a shock absorber in the knees or in the intervertebral discs. The cells in cartilage are called chondrocytes. 
In this type of supportive cartilage, the main function is recoil. It contains a lot of elastic fibers. Elastic tissue maintains the shape of the structures it is found in, for example, the outer ear and the epiglottis. Once again, these cells are called chondrocytes. The most rigid of all the connective tissue is osseous tissue, or bone. Bone's functions are support, storage of minerals, and movement. Osteocytes are the cells that maintain the matrix, and like chondrocytes, they live in little caves called lacuna. Bone has a solid matrix which consists of calcified minerals. Contrary to what you might think, bone has an excellent blood supply and heals very quickly. The last category of connective tissue has a fluid matrix. It contains both blood and lymph. Blood and lymph are responsible for transport of gases, waste, nutrients, hormones, etc. throughout the body, as well as defense of the body by the immune system. The matrix in both blood and lymph are liquid, and the cells in blood are called erythrocytes, or red blood cells, which carry both oxygen and carbon dioxide. The cells in lymph are called leukocytes, or white blood cells, which are specialized cells that defend the body against foreign invaders. We also have some tissue membranes within the body that cover and line body surfaces. Most of these membranes are made up of both epithelial and connective tissue working together. There are four different types of membranes. The first one is mucous membranes, which cover areas that are exposed to the outside of the body. These surfaces must be kept moist to reduce friction and facilitate absorption or secretion, so they secrete a covering of mucus hence being called mucous membranes. This type of membrane covers all of the digestive tract, the respiratory tract, and the reproductive tract, as well as most of the urinary tract. In contrast to mucous membranes, serous membranes cover cavities that do not directly open to the exterior. They line body cavities in the trunk, and each membrane has a different name based on what it covers. The pericardium surrounds the heart. The pleura covers each lung, and the peritoneum surrounds the abdominal cavity. The cutaneous membrane covers the entire body. This is what you think of as your skin. It consists of a thick protective layer of stratified squamous epithelium and an underlayer of alveolar connective tissue. It is generally dry and waterproof and helps protect the body. Synovial membranes line cavities of movable joints. Unlike the other membranes, the synovial membrane consists only of connective tissue. No epithelial tissue is present. Synovial fluid is secreted and lubricates and nourishes the cartilage covering the bones. That's it for connective tissue. Come back to watch the next video in the series about muscular and nervous tissue. See you in class.